Hello there, wrestling fans of the world. Welcome back to another edition of your favorite wrestling podcast. It is Ring Respect Radio right here on the Video Bros Network. I am Bobby Munson, and I'm joined at this time, as always, by my video bro. He is the throat of the goat and the man with the angelic voice. He is Papa Smokes. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great, Munson. How are you people doing out there? I hope everybody is staying safe, staying healthy. Uh, I mean, we're still technically going through this pandemic, Papa Smokes, but hopefully maybe we're seeing the tail end of it. Uh, with any luck, we'll eventually be getting back to live shows and, you know, some great live wrestling action. I mean, even the little bits that we can see with fans in the in the arena, it just uh, it makes you want it that much more. And I'm looking forward to that day coming sooner rather than later. Yeah, me too. Uh, I'm, like everyone, I'm pretty tired of all these restrictions and everything. I've been abiding by them like a good citizen and all that, but uh, I'm ready to go out. And I want to see some wrestling. I want to see some live music. I want to go to some gatherings with other people that want to have fun. It would be just nice to get back to a normal life. I think we got to say it right here, right now, Papa Smokes. When we can get back to that kind of stuff as well, whether or not we get straight into the live wrestling, it doesn't matter. I think one of these days, especially for the people local to Saskatoon, I think we need to have like a a ring respect party night at one bar or something like that, whatever we need to do to get a bunch of fans there communicating again, getting prepared for some live wrestling action. Come on down. We'll have a little bit of ring respect fun, maybe do some videotape in that night and just have a good old uh, fucking drunk fest that we can uh, throw up on YouTube one of these days. Yeah, I I would like that a lot. We've been uh, threatening slash promising to do that for a while now, but various, uh, roadblocks such as COVID and stuff we haven't got it done but uh, yeah damn it I, I miss some of our great fans I miss all of them really but the, especially the ones I know personally uh, I, I miss them I miss seeing all my uh, good wrestling people every month and uh, yeah I, I just can't wait till we can get back to some live wrestling action yeah I'm missing all uh, all the people not just the fans but also the everybody that helps us uh work behind the scenes and also all the in-ring performers from Prairie Pro Wrestling and all the other great talented companies that we got going over here in the Western provinces. Um, It's it's great to be able to do these over the phone sessions here and stuff like that that we've been doing for quite a few months now, Papa Smokes. But damn it, I even miss coming over and having a good old fucking beer and having a good old video bros night like we have not done for so damn long. And uh, the day's got to be coming soon, my man. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, It's... It's feeling a little empty at uh, Studio Smokes here. I, we need, we need uh, months and coming by with the, with the big microphone and, uh, yeah, just sitting down, having some fun, having a few beers and talking about professional wrestling. Yes, sir. And it, uh, the day is coming soon, but in the meantime, we have been enjoying being able to bring you Ring Respect to Radio uh, virtually the way we've been doing it for the last few months so that we can still communicate with all you great fans that continue to listen in. Uh, If you are listening in for the very first time, though, as always, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and click the subscribe button down below. Turn on the notification bell so you can know any time we release new material right here on the Video Bros Network. And if you want to join in on the conversation with Papa Smokes and I any time, feel free to reach out to us in the comments below. Uh, Let us know your thoughts on our show and about other shows you enjoy. Maybe we got something we need to review. Let us have a link to it. We'll check it out and review it on a later episode of Ring Respect Radio. We like to engage with all our fans, whether they're local or from around the world. And you know what, Papa Smokes, I was looking at the stats on YouTube the other day, and I got to give a big shout out to the people of India who are now our number two listening crowd here on Ring Respect Radio. All right. Is that is that true? I haven't seen that one yet, Mons, and uh, that's quite nice. I, I know the India is becoming uh, quickly a very... Uh, huge company in terms of its wrestling fandom too so if they're uh, getting into ring respect radio too you know they're getting a good uh, education in their podcast you bet yeah they are actually our number two from last month's statistics right behind our fans here in canada and uh falling into third the united states so uh hopefully america wakes up here because they're starting to fall behind but in the meantime we love all the fans doesn't matter what part of the world you're tuning in from we are thankful that you take the time to tune into the show each and every week it makes it worthwhile to come out here and do this for you guys it's been a lot of fun it continues to be a lot of fun and we got some big plans here for ring respect coming up in the coming weeks i look forward to seeing some great new things here from papa smokes and i right here on the video bros network 
But one thing we've been doing quite frequently, consistently, and loving every bit of it is talking about Major League Wrestling, Bob and Spokes Fusion. And we're getting into episode 124. We're going to be talking about this one as we're leading up to the upcoming pay-per-view event, Never Say Never. A lot of great matches being built up for this one. A lot of them announced, ready to go for this event. And the builds continue to happen. We kicked off episode 124 here. A recap of last episode between Fatu and Jacob Oliver. And then showing Tankman's interference coming in, taking Fatu out. And that leading to the beginning of the night where we've got an uh, interview here right off the hop with Calvin Tankman. And then he gets joined by Injustice halfway through here. Looks like we definitely got uh, a pairing here. Injustice have found themselves a big man to watch their back as well too. And uh, we've talked about whether or not they were in over their heads. But it seems with Tankman on their side now, they might have added the muscle they need in there to really give themselves an advantage. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, we've mentioned before that Injustice used to be a three-man squad with Cotto Brazil as the third man, and then he was injured to the point where he had to retire from wrestling by Contra in one of their sneak attacks. So isn't this uh, fitting and, and poetic justice somehow that uh, they get a new member of their uh, faction just in time for their feud with Contra, and it's Calvin Tankman, a, a heavyweight hustle, an absolute tank of a man, not to uh, make the pun too obvious there, but uh, they, they really got some big muscle on their team now, and this is going to help them uh, enormously in their battle with Contra. It sure is, and Tankman cutting this promo, I mean, he obviously is after Jacob Fatu now, after the championship, and he's going to get it, Papa Smokes. It has been announced, I don't know if it was announced on this show, but after this show was completed, uh, never say never, we are going to get that championship match. So Calvin Tankman has pushed himself to the front of the line. Calvin Tankman going straight for the champion fought to it, never say never. Are we think that Calvin Tankman is in over his head going against fought to, or maybe fought to is underestimating what Calvin Tankman's pos uh, capabilities are? I think either of those things could be true. Um, I think uh, this is a huge uh, battle coming up between two huge men. And uh, I obviously, I think Tankman has less professional wrestling experience than does uh, Jacob Fatu, but um, he's also got that undefeated streak going into this match. Uh, he's got a lot of momentum on his side, and uh, yeah, that's just it, is that uh, maybe Fatu hasn't tangled with Calvin Tankman before, maybe hasn't watched a whole lot of tape on him, and uh, maybe Tankman's got something up his sleeve for this too. Uh, I might be kind of surprised if he was, if Tankman was successful in his first title match, but um, he's going to get a he's going to get a good uh, sample of of Jacob Fatu on this pay per view, and uh, that that'll only uh, build his knowledge and uh, experience and reputation to have a title match, uh, even if it's unsuccessful. He'll, uh, he'll have been there once already, and he'll just be gunning for Fatu even more after that. So really excited for this first matchup between the two big guys. Yeah, I was I was definitely shocked to see that it was going to be the the headlining match for Never Say Never. Uh, kind of came out of nowhere, but not to say that I was disappointed at the same time, Papa Smokes. I mean, if we were talking two weeks ago about where Never Say Never was leading to and where Jacob Fatu might be positioned and all that, I wasn't thinking Calvin Tankman, but I'm enjoying the fact that it's Calvin Tankman, if that's uh, the way it could be put. I'm, I'm interested in this match. I'm invested in this match. I do, like you, believe that, again, uh, I believe Fatu is so strong and so good at what he does, and he's got Contra looking out for him, that Tankman being as, as new to the company and stuff like that might not be able to overcome the champion, but again... Don't count Tankman out. I mean, he's a big boy. He's going to be able to hang with Jacob fought too. And I think we're going to get a very competitive matchup here, nonetheless, and a great learning lesson uh, that's going to be taken from it. Yeah, and I think maybe the winner might be determined by um, whoever's faction is more uh, successful in defeating the other faction outside the ring. You know what I'm saying by that? Because I'm sure both teams will be trying to interfere in this match and influence the outcome but uh we'll see if injustice uh jordan oliver and myron reed can stand up the other yeah and uh yeah and you got you got to think that uh 
again, it could lead to a lot of shenanigans at Never Say Never as well, too, uh, leading to that inevitable six-man tag match we were talking about of Jacob Fatu along with Davari and, of course, Simon Gotch taking on uh, Calvin Tankman and the members of Injustice, Myron Reed and Jordan Oliver. So a lot of things that could go down here. And we haven't even kicked off into the actual wrestling part of the MLW Fusion episode here, Pop Smokes. Uh, how about you uh, kick us off with the first match of the night? Yeah, why don't I? Uh, this is uh, the first match of this episode is a, is a nice undercard match here. It's uh, Gringo Loco versus Gino Medina. And we've seen that this is a rematch of a, of a match we saw a couple of weeks ago between these same two, a pretty competitive match. I think uh, MLW is trying to uh, launch their new, their new young guy from Mexico, Gino Medina, as we discussed last episode. Uh, uh, they were bringing him in kind of slowly uh, before the whole COVID shutdown thing. Now I think they want to get him into the, uh, get him into a program get him into a regular spot on the card. And uh, what they've got for him here is Gringo Loco, a pretty uh, a pretty solid uh, undercard competitor here. And, uh, yeah, we're going to go get right into this rematch here. Yeah, and uh, you know what? I wasn't too into this thing as it was kicking off. Uh, again, I, I want to see what uh, it's going to come from Gino Medina, Gringo Loco I'm really not too sure of going into it. And then they started off with the, the, the back and forth, acrobatic type stuff that you know i feel like i've seen it a lot before Papa smokes and i kind of almost tuned out a little bit from the match at that point but then something happened and this match kind of changed around it became a bit more of a wrestling match and some later on spots especially that spot later on and I'm, we'll talk about this gringo loco doing the jump between the two ro ropes and the moonsault for a guy his size man i woke up before this match got uh halfway through even they definitely caught my attention and maybe a bit better than i was anticipating at first yeah yeah i'm with you there i didn't totally love this match uh, i also felt like the beginning uh, left something to be desired i, I respect uh, gringo loco he, he i've seen better matches of his in the past i mean in the past couple years with mlw um i, I think it's kind of a a funny little character he's got going on there. Uh, he does have some skills. He does have that body type that uh, suggests that he shouldn't be doing some of the stuff he does, and yet he does it quite successfully and quite impactfully. So uh, Gringo Loco, yeah, pretty good opponent for a guy who's going to be starting out uh, in the company, just kind of building his name, building his reputation. And I'm talking about Gino Medina here. I actually like this kid. Um, he, he's young, he's inexperienced, he has a little uh, aura of greenness around him still, but I think he's got, he has kind of a little bit of a star quality that I like, and I, I'm not sure what it is or if I can describe it exactly, but I, I like this guy and I'm excited to see where it's going to go, and uh, I think he looks like a, he looks and has the, the sort of persona of, a, of an old style wrestler and uh, uh, just one of those arrogant pretty boy heel type guys and uh his skills are pretty good in the ring he's he's obviously uh trained in, in the lucha style and all that but he he works the heel style really good too and uh, i think this is another guy that just needs more matches uh, more reps more practice in the ring and uh and uh even his promos are pretty good at this point too so uh we saw uh Gringo Loco make kind of a little bit of a comeback in this match, but really Medina was in control for most of it. Uh, and then he got the one, two, three after a kick to the back of uh, Loco's head and got the one, two, three. So uh, uh, Medina looking pretty okay in this, in this match. It, it, it fulfilled what it was supposed to do, I think, and uh, put the young uh, star Medina over. And uh, Gringo Loco, uh, we're not too worried really about how many pinfalls he takes because that's his spot on the card. So uh, I think it, was, it wasn't really a great match, I don't think, but it did the trick in putting Gino Medina over. Yeah, definitely, man. Um, Gino Medina, I like this kid's look, definitely. When he's uh, 
doing his uh when he got up to the ropes at the end of the match to kind of do his uh pose for the cameras and everything and he looked at the camera the kid's got a good look and i think that uh with a lot of more work and the right opponents i think uh, we could be looking at somebody who's going to be definitely mixing it up at the upper echelon as he moves up in his career here i think there's a lot to be said for gino medina it just it definitely wasn't all there in this match but it's you know it's a work in progress and it's going to get there eventually yeah yeah i think it's also funny that you you also noticed that spot at the end of the match when he was up on the ropes uh you know, saluting the fans, or if there were fans there, but he looked right at that high hard camera there and gave it a good long look. We got such a good shot of Gino Medina. Uh, like you said, gave the kids a good look at him, and of course, as as camera guys, we always appreciate that side of a wrestler's uh, conduct in uh, just listening to the uh, TV people, uh, listening to what they say, and. Uh, and playing to the cameras and knowing where the cameras are and knowing how to get a good shot out of it. Uh, I appreciate that as a camera guy and, and as a fan as well. Yeah. I mean, it looks great on camera and it really helps to get a guy over and stuff. We need to know who you are. And a lot of that is sold within your, it's sold in your body and your emotion and stuff like that. And if you're going to cover that up from the camera, you're, you're killing off at least 50% of your career right there because I mean, your in-ring work could be absolutely immaculate, but if you don't know how to play it to the camera, you're never going to quite get there. Yeah, totally correct. And uh, just as we said, like the look of this guy, he's a handsome uh, young Latino star. And yeah, get right up there and play it to the camera. We all get a good look at this guy, and we can decide if we like him or not, if we think he's a heel or not. And uh, really the main thing is, when you're watching wrestling on TV, you want to see the guys. You want to get a good, close look at them. Yeah, and he, he did it well. And you know what? Speaking of guys who know how to play well to the camera, up next we had a promo from uh, filthy Tom Lawler. And again, Tom Lawler is one uh, pissed-off individual lately, Papa Smokes. And uh, he's uh, he's got a lot to be said for his uh, distaste for the Von Erics as of late. Yeah, yeah, and... Like we talked about in the previous episode, he's he's grumpy that they uh, the Von Erics uh, <clears throat> disrupted his filthy island fight card, drove their jeep into the middle of the match, and uh, started beating everybody up on Team Filthy, and uh, just perfect thing to uh, keep a feud going hard. And uh, yeah, Lawler's not over it. He felt like Filthy Island should have maybe. Uh, Gone, gone better than it did, and he, he blames the Von Erics for uh, destroying his little vanity project there, too. So uh, a little bit of fire here. He also claimed to have been a little bit injured in that uh, brouhaha at the end there. So, uh, yeah, we've got all the makings for a hot feud here, and I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it's uh, going to pan out greatly. Uh, we've mentioned that before. Uh, not too much that we can add to that. Tom Waller, absolutely fucking great. Looking forward to seeing how that all unfolds. Uh, up next, again, PWI coming in with a top five this week. Last week, we got the f- top five tag teams. This week, the top five middleweights. So middleweights, sorry, and we're going to go through them right now. Uh, number five, um, I, I don't know if this one surprised me or not, but Brian Pillman Jr., <laughs> I guess I just, you know, it, for all the losses that the guy's taken since we've been doing this thing, Papa Smokes, I was shocked to see his name on there, but I was also trying to think of who else's name could have made the list at the same time. Um, and then I started thinking, I'm like, well, if you're going to go in there and talk about a guy who's, you know, even more current and been giving you performance, I'm kind of surprised then she didn't get this spot. Yeah, that's totally what I was thinking too, but I think he's just not as big of a name. They wanted uh, a more recognizable name in that spot, I suppose. He, I don't even think of Pillman Jr. as a... Uh, as a middleweight so much anymore. He's not a massive guy, but he's got to be over 200 pounds. But anyway, uh, that he has had some match in that middleweight division. And uh, yeah, I, I guess they're just putting the name in there. I, I didn't really think Pillman would even still be around at this time. I kind of thought he was finishing up his work with MLW before he went to AEW full time, which it appears that he is now in his tag team there. But uh He's still doing shots in ML, MLW, and they've all been losses, which which kind of suggests something, too. But uh, they, they still seem to have him as active on their roster, so I guess he's still going to be competing. 
Yeah, I guess man, he could be working an open contract at the same time too. So we'll we'll uh, see how that pans out for him. Uh, number four, Buku Dao. We talked about him last week, making his challenge to TJP, uh, really selling us on that promo. So again, I'm actually happy to see Buku Dao making the list. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't even really think he had any singles matches in MLW yet, but uh, the direction to go with him, I that was probably the plan the whole time, was just launching him the tag team temporarily and then have that break up and uh, have him have a feud after that and then maybe get into contention for uh, Leo Rush's uh, middleweight championship. So uh, excited to see where this goes. Yeah, for sure. Uh, number three, the former middleweight champion, Myron Reed, on the list. Uh, he's been more involved on the tag team side of things as of late, so maybe falling a little bit out of favor in terms of the top middleweight. Um, next, uh, Davari. Man, that's a great pick for this list. Davari looks absolutely amazing, and I really think there's a lot to, uh, that's going to be and can be done with this guy in an MLW ring, and glad that he's not only on this list, but that he's a part of the MLW roster as well, too. Yeah, yeah, this is a guy that just has been working hard on the indies for a long, long time and uh, working hard in the weight room, as we mentioned before, too. And uh, you just uh, a wrestler can't help but get over when, when their body looks that good, too. The half of the work as to getting over is already done when you look like that. And uh, Dovari now with a nice, comfy spot in Contra, uh, I, I could see him making a run for the middleweight title, too. Yeah, Leo Rush should be watching his back, definitely. Uh, but he should also watch out for the former uh, Triple Eight Cruiserweight champion, the man that he beat, the Laredo Kid, who's been really shining inside the ring and I'm sure is going to be chomping at a bit to take on Leo Rush again. Uh, Leo Rush then named the top man, the middleweight champion, the, uh, I guess, dual champion, right? Because he's also the Triple A Cruiserweight champion. So Leo Rush with all the gold currently right now. And what a beautiful segue they did on MLW here. So we got this list. They talk about Leo Rush, and they've done this before, and I like this. Right away, we go into a segment where Alicia, too, is mentioning that Leo Rush has made an open contract for somebody to sign to take him on for the middleweight championship. It was hung up on the wall for anybody to take and sign right there. Leaves it up to mystery. Is this going to be somebody currently on the roster, or are we going to see a new face entering MLW here, Pop Smokes? Yeah, I really, really wonder, and uh, it could have been someone on that list that we just read that, that picked up that contract and signed it, or, or somebody from outside, and uh, it also begs the question as to whether he, uh, whether Rush will defend the AAA lightweight championship in MLW, or if he'll be making shots in Mexico, either with or without MLW, we don't know this yet, so... Uh, Really, it leaves it open. Uh, they, they could have uh, a stream of Mexicans coming in to challenge for uh, either of those belts. So also exciting, too. I kind of hope we get to see someone new. Well, speaking of which, there's also some internet chatter as of late, too, about people talking about Andrade Cien Almas and uh, his time with WWE coming to an end or something. I haven't looked too deep into it, but uh, people talking about where he could end up. And I know a lot of the internet chatter have... People saying, oh, he should end up over in AEW. But then there is a bit of the fans that would love to see Andrade C and almost make his way over to MLW and especially to be able to mix it up with somebody like Leo Rush in the middleweight division. Now, him grabbing this contract and making a debut against Leo Rush might, right away might be the wrong decision in a sense because I can't see a strong way to book those two out of that position with each other. I think if he was to come over, it'd be great to see him build up a string of wins first and get some uh, get some matches under his belt and then build up to a match with Leo Rush, which I would love to see. I'm not sure if you're familiar with this kid's work, but Andrade, man, this, this kid is the package. He's really good. And when he gets to go in the ring, there's a lot to be said about the work he does. Yeah, I, I've seen some matches. He, he's really, really slick and really good. Um, yeah, I, I think if the... WWE can't find a spot for him. They don't deserve his talents, really. I, I, it kind of sucks that... Uh, is it him that dates Charlotte Flair, too? Uh, I suppose he'll, he leaves the company. Uh, it might affect that a little bit, too. But um, just, just remember how they booked uh, Leo Rush, too, a, a guy that came straight from the WWE. It was uh, He didn't really need much of an introduction. Most of the fans knew who he was, so he got thrown into that middleweight title picture very, very quickly. 
did he only have one match on TV before he won the won the title from Myron Reed? So they, maybe Andrade might be the same thing like that. To most people uh, or most wrestling fans watching this would at least know his name from the uh, large platform he's been on for the past couple of years. But who knows? Who knows? He's a working guy. He would probably like to get in there and uh, have a few matches against a different roster too. Yeah, and I would look forward to it. I mean, I really like Andrade's work, and I'm going to say it right now. I, I would hope as a fan that I get to see him somewhere like MLW. I would go for New Japan even, Papa Smokes. I would love to see any of those destinations. Again, we don't like to be disrespectful on the show. I'm just, neither of us are big fans of AEW in any way, shape, or form. It's not our cup of tea. I really don't want to see somebody who I'm a fan of end up somewhere where I'm just, I'm not invested in the matchups that they're going to have over there currently. I'd rather see them go down the path that it might be something that I can invest my time into. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure uh, with all the uh, WWE guys now that they've had a few um, friends from from WWE that have gone to AEW and they can watch what's happened there now and how they're getting used and stuff. And I, I can't imagine it's much of a draw uh, from a professional standpoint, aside from the money, I guess, which is a draw for sure. But uh, if you look at the way uh, some of the uh, cast-off WWE talent has been used in AEW so far, it's uh, it's it's underwhelming to say the least. Uh, to use Miro and and uh, FTR as an example, uh, just FTRs had a nice little run there, but. Uh, yeah, it's still it, it it's a waste of their talents when when the when the matches are booked so ridiculously like that and the the angles are booked very non logically and stuff. Again, I'm not trying to go on a tirade against AEW. I don't even want to talk about AEW. But if it comes up like this, yeah, I would say a guy like Andrade with a great skill set. Uh, it's just, I don't think that would be a good fit for him. But again, he might just want the money. Who knows? Yeah, we'll have to see. But, uh, you know, again, you can always hope for the uh, best so we can see those types of matches and even maybe see him walk up in the NWA. Any of those paths would be okay with uh, myself and I know with yourself as well too, Bob Smokes. So. Uh, but let's get back to uh, in-ring action up next. This is an interesting matchup we got paired up. ACH taking on Kevin Koo of Violence is Forever, part of Team Filthy. Uh, Kevin Koo was who ACH had named as being the voice that he heard when he was uh, basically getting the uh, piss beaten out of him uh, before his big uh, world championship match up there. So he's uh, had a beef with Kevin Koo going uh, up to this point. And we know all the uh, ties with the Von Erics and everything that's been going on here. So one-on-one -on -one matchup we saw. Kevin Koo get a one-on-one -on -one matchup at Filthy Island, but here was another opportunity against a very established name like ACH. And I think uh, Kevin Koo looked good at coming out of this thing, man. He looked uh, he looked sharp in there. Yeah, yeah, he looked okay, I think. Um, this is still another guy, though, that I think has spent a lot of his life uh, uh, doing uh, shoot fighting. Uh, uh, they, I think they said karate and uh, also powerlifting and some other kind of grappling, but... Uh, I feel like he's, he hasn't uh, reached his potential in, in professional wrestling yet. Sometimes he, I, I just watch a guy's feet when, when, they're, when he's having a match, and Ku just looks like he's not sure of where to go sometimes. He's got those little feet that are moving around and, and, uh, and kind of not sure, taking little ex extra steps, kind of changing direction a little bit. He, he just doesn't look like the... Uh, quite the veteran uh, slick professional wrestler yet but he does have that shoot skill that that serves him fine there was a lot of nice holds applied in this match there was a couple holds uh, i'm not even all that familiar with and that's probably from kevin ku's uh, martial arts background I, I appreciate stuff like that where uh uh you can watch these guys work they'll take an arm and then you'll just see kevin ku look at the guy's legs and then yeah, he'll grab a leg and tie that up down too. So it's not just an arm bar or a, or a twist of the arm. It's it's he's also bending the guy's leg the other way too, and uh, that that's just a a cornerstone of submission grappling and stuff. You can see the guy's got a background in that, as does his partner Dominic Garini, and uh, 
it's kind of a neat style to watch, but uh, I, I didn't find it overly exciting, nor do I really find ACH overly exciting, although he's a solid wrestler and I uh, have nothing bad to say about him. This, I, I, this match kind of plotted a little bit for me, but uh, I, I still appreciated seeing uh, Kevin Koo as a singles competitor and seeing what he's got in the ring. Yeah, and I, I, I like you pointed out the, the footwork and stuff like that. I uh, see where you're going with that and everything. But it was those holds. I think it was the holds that uh, Kevin Koo showed in this matchup that really kind of sold me a little bit more on it. I think I, I like the inventiveness of it, and I see... I, I'm obviously we both see the potential in him, but uh, being able to see some of those different holds and stuff like that, and seeing a match that he could perform those in, uh, basically being you know led by a guy with such you know skill in the ring. ACH is a solid worker. I mean, I've always enjoyed what he does out there. I wouldn't say like again you say about him being exciting. He's not. I don't think ACH is ever going to be the most exciting guy in the ring. He's not going to grab your attention every time, but man, he'll give you a solid match every single time. And sometimes that's all you really need. And ACH does a great work of that. And he did a great job working with Kevin Koo, even despite, you know, Kevin Koo not quite being fully there and everything. And uh, it's going to take a lot of work yet. But the one thing I got to say is Kevin Koo's actual look, I think sells a lot of what he could be and everything too. If he can get his yeah. fight game behind that inside a wrestling ring, he can sharpen up the way he looks. Man, the guy looks wise has got a star written on him. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with that a hundred percent. The hair, the, the tattoos, uh, he wears the little grappling trunks and everything and the little boots. I like that a lot. He looks like a, a guy that's, made his bread and butter in, in shoot fighting of, of some form and uh, is now just just as MLW embraces uh, different kinds of fighter into the, the hybrid pro wrestling style. It, it works for that too. And uh, I wasn't quite sure when I first saw Kevin Cooey, he, he has a, his body doesn't, it looks kind of weird. It doesn't look that athletic and everything, but once you see him in the ring, like you can tell that, that he's a very experienced fighter it makes a lot more sense when you see him in a match. And, uh, yeah, I think he looked pretty all right. And uh, I, I like his tag team as well. I think Garini is kind of in the same boat as him. A good uh, uh, grappler, a good jiu-jitsu uh, uh, fighter and all that. But uh, just needs to get the fluid match going still in professional wrestling. I think that's what Kevin Koo needs also. I mean, it'll come, no question about it. The guys will keep working at it. And uh, with a good guy like Tom Lawler uh, 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 being their leader and, and leading them along, uh, I think they'll come along just fine. Yeah, exactly, man. And uh, yeah, as this unfolded, obviously Greeny decided to interfere in this matchup, which led to the Von Ericks coming out for the save. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention is because we talked about some of the cooperation and moves and stuff like that on previous episodes of Ring Respect. Uh, there was a moment here where ACH did a dive to the outside where at first I was I was ready to roll my eyes here, Papa Smokes, because how many times we've seen guys climb to the top ropes and there's the cooperation from all the guys on the outside waiting for the guy to fall in on them so that they can catch him and everything. This one, I didn't roll my eyes as expected. ACH climbed to those top ropes and as I looked, the Von Ericks were actually holding Kevin Koo and Dominic Carini in place for yeah. ACH to hit them. And so there was more logic behind the move than what there typically is in a professional wrestling match in this modern era. Yeah, it's funny that you bring that up because I was thinking the exact same thing during that spot. Because the camera was on ACH as he was climbing to the top rope and you could kind of just see that the the four wrestlers were standing in a row in the bottom, and I just thought, oh, my God, are they like every other wrestling company these days, and the guys are just going to stand for 30 seconds with their arms around each other and just wait? But, yeah, I also came to that uh, realization uh, very quickly, too, that the Von Erics, in fact, were holding the stunned opponents there and uh, for their buddy ACH, and that, that ended up being some good teamwork. So, again, the booking... It, it, just that small little touch there brought it from silly and an eye roller to a to a logical thing where where the the three uh, 
the three guys, the Vaughn Ericks and ACH were working together. And it just speaks to uh, that there has just got to be a six man tag between these guys coming up in the near future. Oh, it it just reeks of it at this point, Bob Smokes. And I mean, I'm I'm excited for it because you've got a lot of talent in that ring. You've got a lot of you you got a lot of guys that are very green in it at the same time. But what a big feud and a big matchup they've got set coming up for these guys, and a great way to really kind of get all six guys over in MLW. And I mean, again, I don't think Tom Lawler really needs to get even more over in MLW, but he's already going to be a top guy for years to come. Uh, but the other five, I think very much are going to benefit from this whole thing as will Tom Lawler essentially too, but uh, just all around great booking and fantastic way of doing this. Uh, ACH picking up a win, uh, probably the right decision in, you know, sense of the uh, experience of ACH and Kevin Koo being very green still. Uh, Kevin Koo not exactly needing a big singles matchup win at this point in his career just yet. And ACH probably needing that a little bit more to keep things strong. And, you know, again, it also helps build up the fact that, okay, maybe ACH and the Vaughn Ericks have got the Team Filthy's number. But at the same time, Team Filthy probably got a lot of revenge they need to be dishing out and they're uh, they're quite pissed off, and I think there's going to be hell to pay when it comes down to it. Yeah, yeah, they are pissed off, and I know this is going to be good. I think this will be a solid feud. Um, do we have a match set up at Never Say Never between these two yet, or have they announced that yet? Maybe maybe I'm not bringing it up too soon. I don't know, to be honest with you, Bob Smokes. I, I'm really just familiar with the, the heavyweight championship match as a uh, as a definite on the card uh, I'm really not too sure about the other matches on the card as of right now uh, but obviously that's going to unfold as we start uh, talking about next week's episode again on ring respect and as we get closer to the never say never but I think it almost screams that this is happening and if it's not happening on never say never this has got to be something that's headlining an upcoming episode of fusion in the next few weeks yeah, I can't wait. They built this one up nice, and it's, uh, the payoff's going to be beautiful. Sure is, man. Uh, so after ACH picks up the big win there, then we got uh, Hammerstone being interviewed backstage by Alicia Toot. Obviously, Hammerstone's got his hands full tonight defending the uh, Openweight Championship against L.A. Park. I uh, remember that Selena De La Renta said she was addicted to gold, wanted all the gold. She's coming after Hammerstone. Uh we talked about Contra units spreading themselves a little bit too thin. And when we start, first started doing these reviews here, Hammerstone looked absolutely unstoppable. And now it almost seems like he's starting to spread himself a little bit too thin. He's got his beef going on with Contra unit now getting mixed up into things with Los Parks now. I mean, he's kind of running himself into some really big heavy hitters and some guys who actually pose a viable threat, in my opinion. To his championship. Yeah, yeah. This is a this is a faction he probably doesn't want to get into something with right now either, because like you said, he's got something going on with Vance Kruger and uh, Contra Unit. Plus, uh, now with Lost Parks, uh, they they're just uh, I don't think they have anything against Hammerstone uh, personally. They just want the all the gold for uh, Azteca Underground. So he's got a target on his back right now and. Uh, Selena's uh, wrangled a match for uh, her main man, L.A. Park, in this. And uh, we got a clash of two more huge guys here. Isn't L.A. Park massive, hey? Like, uh, he's just, even look at his hands and his fingers. He's just such a huge, huge man. And uh, Alexander Hammerstone having a little bit of fun calling him a plus-size catalog luchador and all yeah. that stuff. But uh, as funny as that is... Uh, uh, L.A. Park still, after all these years, no joke whatsoever. The the guy's just so smooth and and, and uh, experienced in the ring that uh, yeah, he was putting a few over on Hammerstone and uh, and just with some dirty tactics and some underhanded uh, thumbs to the eye and a few other tactics like that. Uh, uh, he'll put, he'll put your shoulders to the mat in a big hurry. So Alexander uh, had his hands full in this one. Yeah, there's a couple of big hosses going at it. And uh, L.A. Park, I think, like, when I saw him many, many years ago, it just back when guys were maybe a little bit more bigger in wrestling than they are nowadays, L.A. Park didn't always seem like he was the 
biggest guy out there in professional wrestling. And nowadays you look at the guy and he definitely looks like he's a lot bigger than the average wrestler coming into a professional wrestling ring. I'm right up there with Hammerstone. I mean, these two were just uh, the right sizes of each other uh, going at it like two big hosses throughout this match. And even there's a couple of suicide dives there from LA Park that you wouldn't expect to see it. A, a guy at his age doing but uh, fantastic to see how smooth he performs it. Like you said, Papa Smokes, uh, he is a marvel to watch this late in his career. And I'm actually really enjoying everything they've been doing with him and with Los Parks. I've been uh, loving every bit of it. It's a great addition to the MLW uh, shows. And for sure. And for how, uh, how mean of a character that L.A. Park is on MLW, too. You can see that part of his uh, use for the booking there is just is just introducing his two sons i mean at some point in the future la park will be gone but we'll we'll have uh, la park jr and he ho to la park possibly as a tag team possibly as singles uh, in the fed over the next years but uh yeah, the 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 beat goes on with the uh, lost parks and uh even after la park decides he's finished in the ring uh, He's already introduced his two sons with the similar mask and suit as him, so uh, his legacy will continue, and uh, it's going to be his legacy will always be strong in MLW. Yeah, and they're one disciplined faction, the three of them. But then, speaking about disciplined, how about uh, the ending to this whole one? Hammerstone managing to pick up the win over LA Park, but it wouldn't be all. Uh, all celebrations after that because Neil Mortez came out and Selena's plan unfolds even further. An absolute beatdown of Hammerstone in that ring and the championship was then basically handed over to Neil Mortez who has taken it with him. He has walked off with the open weight championship after this one. Yeah, yeah, how shocking. Uh, I wanted to bring up first of all just uh, before we get to that but uh I liked uh, Hammerstone, uh, his finishing move for uh, L.A. Park, that the kind of speculation was, will he be able to administer the nightmare pendulum on a huge man like L.A. Park? And uh, he never really got the opportunity to try it, but, but when he when it came time to put the finishing touches on him, he did that, wrapped the uh, Park's own arm around his head and then gave him that vicious short clothesline like down on the mat there that that was very cool uh and uh, impressive finishing maneuver also very convincing that you could get a pin on a top star like la park with that move but yeah yeah we knew there would be uh interference and uh all kinds of shenanigans after the match and uh yeah didn't mil muertes just look so tough and uh he really looked like a madman in the way that he attacked uh Alexander Hammerstone and smashing his head into the mat repeatedly and just the, the full mount and the, the hard punches to the head. You know, uh, again, not to uh, not to uh, cast aspersions on any other uh, companies right now, but with a nice close camera shot, uh, how good those, those chopping punches look to the jaw of Hammerstone. I mean, it looked like every single one connected it. You don't always see that on the other channels these days. That was very refreshing. Yeah, it really was. And again, they had sold it all night that there was a masked man in the building that was looking for Hammerstone. And again, the commentators kept selling it that this was Mods Kruger. Mods Kruger finally coming back after Hammerstone because they, we still haven't seen Mods Kruger ever since the Bocklay brawl that they had there. And suddenly we get Mil Mortez in the mix. And Jesus Christ, if Hammerstone doesn't have his hands full now, Papa Smokes, he's got two, two big mass men on his ass here and after his championship. And Mil Mortez walked away with it. I mean, now Hammerstone's got to an answer to him. And I imagine that one's coming up at Never Say Never. I'd imagine that match has got to be on the cards now. Yeah, I would imagine so. And what a nice... Uh... What a nice match that looks like on paper, uh, uh, and I think it will deliver in the ring, too. I was just also thinking about, uh, as I thought of these two getting it on, like how many big dudes there are in MLW now, like how many truly big sides of beef they've got as wrestlers there, including the new guy, Pero, and uh, Ed Lost Parks, and Hammerstone, and uh, Mods Kruger, like, this is not one of those federations with a bunch of little uh, 
little lightweight flippy guys they got some beef in this in this uh in mlw now and it's really nice to see it makes it more exciting when it's the big guys fighting like that and hammerstone versus muertes man that's that's a lot of muscle in the ring at one time and i can't wait to see these two big dudes mix it up yeah there is just so much on the table and you talk about this and they talk about their hybrid version of wrestling bringing in all these different styles but they they also do it with the weight categories and they don't ever try to sell it as the uh you know, the little guy can overcome the big guy each and every time. And if they do do it, and we talked about this before when we were talking about Tankman and the Laredo Kid and some of these types of matches where the little guys find a way to basically try to overcome the big guys in something that makes sense. They start to attack a leg or do something that would ground a, a big guy like that and allow them to then take off with their style of wrestling. So a lot of that build and everything that they do in these matches is working to help sell the whole picture kind of thing it doesn't matter if we're in there with a high flyer and a big guy or two big hosses they work the style of match that works for them and it doesn't work every single time but man i gotta say 90 percent of the time in mlw everything is clicking together pretty decently if not sometimes excellently and we're being rewarded with some incredible incredible matches yeah yeah and that's the beauty of good booking too it's, it's so vitally important to any wrestling fed that uh, that your shit makes sense your matches and promos come together to build for the next uh paying match and uh and i just think they're doing a great job over there um i i'm excited they keep adding new interesting people they keep uh expanding to that global um kind of feel that they have with people from different areas of the world and different styles of wrestling different styles of shoot fighting and uh, mlw continues to impress me with its uh, sort of versatility in, in all the different <clears throat> excuse me all the different wrestlers and all the different styles they have and it's just it's really nice to not just see the same kind of match with the same roster with the same guys fighting each other all the time it, this they, they keep it interesting they, they keep it fresh for the fans and that uh, I, as a fan watching this, really, really appreciate that. Yeah, and you know, we were talking about how just a year ago we were finally coming over to this type of uh, style of doing ring respect here for Papa Smokes. And one year later, you know, we're talking about great matchups being put together with some great booking and stuff. And when we were first doing this podcast, we were trying to find topics. And I'm getting you to slug through some of the uh, garbage that was available during the pandemic and everything like that. This is what truly needed to happen during the pandemic was companies pushing for booking like this. Unfortunately, again, without a lot of competition during the pandemic, because immediately there was about only two co two companies, two or three companies worldwide that were able to operate in any capacity due to funds and everything like that. And, you know, wanting to push through and being considered essential during uh, a so-called pandemic and everything. Um this is what needed to happen. We needed an MLW. We needed NWAs. We needed these guys to come in and do these great things and maybe push the other guys a little bit more and say, hey, we've got something here. It's going to start happening. Uh, the more people that start putting eyes on MLW, hopefully it will force the other companies to maybe rethink the way they're doing things because there's a lot of great talent out there and a lot more wrestling that we could be enjoying every single week. Um but it needs to be put together the way MLW is putting it together. You can try things. If it doesn't work, move on. But again, keep with your continuity. Great job by Court Bauer and the team over there. I can't say enough good things about MLW, Papa Smokes. Love it. I love being able to review these things every single week with you. Uh, anything else we can add to this episode? No, no. I'm just, I, I, I like the way you put it. I'm also pleased with this. I, I don't care so much if the big feds um, get onto this. Like, I think that the, the art of booking is it's slowly being lost uh, as the great bookers die and, and as there's no more people being taught that. Uh, obviously, we've got some extremely crappy shit from the big feds on TV right now, but um, I, I just I don't care because I don't consume that product that I haven't been interested in it in many many years and uh, it's gone downhill and it's it seems like it's almost at the bottom of the hill for some of these big companies right now and 
that's fine with me. I don't care. I want to watch the grassroots uh, feds that that have energy, that have uh, that have more workers, that just want to be there in spite of maybe that they're making less money than they could, but they're they're concerned about their uh, their uh, their art and their wrestling. You know, like that, that they want to they want to expand uh, as people and as wrestlers too. So. I appreciate that there's these feds around now that, that are smaller, that don't pay as much, but, but are booked with some skill and some foresight and, and looking to the future all the time. And that's why I'm always happy to see guys like Jacob Fatu and, and Alexander Hammerstone sign these multi-year contracts with MLW, even though there's probably other places those guys could go and make more money, but they stay with MLW because they like the freedom they appreciate that it's wrestling done right and booked right, and uh, and that's that. As a fan, that's the stuff I want to watch, and that's what I'm gonna watch. So I, I, I'm invested in it, and I, I'm an MLW fan for good now. Yeah, for sure, man. And you know, there's a uh, great interaction that they do online with everybody too. We've mentioned this before that uh, at least the wrestlers and everybody involved, including including Court Bauer himself, uh, reach out to fans. They uh, get involved with the conversation with fans online and stuff like that. It's uh, always great. I've seen some great things, even that Richard Holiday does uh, uh, over on uh, on social media and stuff like that. He really comes up with some good little uh, little bite backs at some of the fans and stuff like that as well, too. He's uh, really quite clever to listen to online. And uh, since we talked about it recently, I've, I've gone and started to uh, check out more from Yosef Samael and about his musical tastes and everything. And man, this, interesting interesting people involved with the mlw from top to bottom uh great company great program great wrestling glad that we're doing these reviews papa smokes they've been fantastic um yeah and we're uh pretty much uh reaching that uh, one hour mark on the show today just like we're i just i can't say it enough we've been about one year of doing the podcast the way we have and i think uh a lot has to be said with the way things have gone and how people have tuned in longer to listening to what we have to say here because there is a fan base out there that wants to get that good professional wrestling talk and get involved with talking about the history of professional wrestling. Uh, something we haven't done for a little bit uh, here uh, is talk about history of pro wrestling. So I think uh, Papa Smokes, I think we owe it to our longtime listeners to come up with a good old topic, something we can go talk about from the grassroots of wrestling. I think we've got something very uh, giant in the works in many ways, and hopefully it'll be something that will really uh, tickle the fans' fancy that we got coming up here on Ring Respect Radio. Just a little tiny tease for something in the near future. And also, again, another little tease, a big uh, interview that we've got set up, one that's uh, close to home for us, and we're going to have that coming up as well soon. So a lot of reasons to tune into the show. Uh, give us a subscribe and turn on that notification bell. And also to go check us out on Back- Backbreaker Media. So Mike and the boys over at Backbreaker giving us a good shout-out. And also... Uh, I believe there's a new group that's come along at the uh, Canadian Wrestling Network here, Papa Smokes. And because of our affiliation with Backbreaker Media, we've actually made it on to the page for the Canadian Wrestling Network here. So Ring Respect Radio now reaching out to the East Coast of Canada, Papa Smokes. So big pat on the back for us. We're uh, we're getting out there more and more each week. God, isn't that great, eh? And I, I'm just... I love it that we're getting more uh, listens and more uh, uh, fans that want to hear us uh, talk about MLW and other professional wrestling. I salute all you fans. I say hi. I say hi to my all of our fans in India as well. And uh, keep listening. We got more stuff. We've got giant things coming, and also a couple of big interviews in the works. So uh, keep your ears to Ring Respect Radio, and we'll keep entertaining you. And once again, as always, stay safe out there, everybody, and we will see you next time.